This video is going to demonstrate how to set up a document for a trifold brochure. Trifold meaning that you're going to have three different panels and you're going to have a front and a back. On this document you will see these blue lines. These are guides to help us in designing our brochure. You can also see a slight margin around the outside. That is so that we know where our text will not be cut off. That's so that we don't have our text cut off when we go to print the brochure. So we're going to go ahead and do this inside of PhotoP. I'm going to go to PhotoP and if you go to PhotoP.com you can come to the start window. I'm going to make a few modifications where it says new project. Make sure you call this your name brochure. We're going to change the width to inches. Make sure you have inches set up and we want it to be 14 inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. This is legal size paper. Then under DPI, we want to change this to 300 dots per inch. This will allow it to print uh, clearer than if it is set to 72 dots per inch. You will see there's this V right here. Click on the V and we're going to choose artboards. Make sure that this is checked it's going to allow us to have multiple artboards or pages inside of our document. I'm going to click on create and here you can see I have my document in PhotoP. Above it it says artboard one. The artboard is a place for creating your designs or your work. You can have multiple artboards to represent multiple pages in a document. Over here on my layers you can see I have artboard one set up and inside I have a layer. What I want to do is duplicate this artboard and put it directly beneath artboard one. That way I can have my paper, my front, and my back lined up. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out by pressing command minus. This way I can see my whole artboard. I come over to my layers. I right click and I'm going to choose duplicate into. It tells me where I want to duplicate this and I have this document that I'm presently using. So I want to duplicate it into here. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see I have Artboard 1 and Artboard 1 copy. I'm going to now drag Artboard 1 copy down directly beneath Artboard 1. I make sure I have my Move tool selected and I click, I make sure the Artboard 1 copy is selected, I click and I drag straight down. Now as I drag straight down, see how I can go off, you can see the red guides there, I'm going to press the shift key on the keyboard which will constrain it. Now I could go a little bit below my document, but I am going to go and line this up directly at the bottom of my document. The reason I did that is because I want the the artboards both to start at zero. You'll need to see how the bottom artboard goes zero, one, two, three, and the top artboard goes zero, one, two, goes the other direction. So our rulers are set up so the top one starts at zero and goes up to eight and a half. Our bottom one starts at zero and goes down to eight and a half. So now that I have both of these artboards set up, I'm going to change the names the top one I'm going to call front and the bottom one I'm going to rename back. Now one thing I want to mention is if you do not see the rulers here on the side you can write you can go up to view and turn on rulers or you can go up to view and turn on rulers. If you are in Chrome you can also press command R or command R to hide. So I have my rulers up. I have it in inches. If yours is in pixels, you right click on the ruler and you change it to inches. So I have my document that's 14 inches wide and eight and a half inches tall. Because this is going to be a tri-fold brochure, we need to get this into three sections so that we can design uh, our designs and know where we're going to fold everything. I need to figure out what one third of 14 inches is. In this case, I'm just going to get a calculator and I'm going to divide 14 by three 
and you can see I get 4.667 and I'm going to go back to photo P and I'm going to drag a ruler guide until I get it to 4.667. Now I'm going to get approximate as best as I can uh, because photo P sometimes it is hard to get the exact value and because these are just our guides I'm going to try to get within a few hundredths of an inch. I did get it 4.667. Now I need to find the next area. I'm going to go back to my calculator and I'm going to multiply this number by 2 because I have two of those sections. So 9.334. So I'm going to again go to my ruler guide. I'm going to go to 9.334 or as close to it as I can. nine point three three is pretty good and here you can see I now have my document divided into three sections I can design my front and I can design my back one other thing I want to point out is that our printers do not print all the way to the edge of the paper and it is not good to have text go all the way to the edge of the paper it becomes hard to read and it can be cut off what I want to do is I want to use my ruler guides to create a margin around the edge of each paper I like to use a quarter inch margin just to make sure I have enough space for everything and I'm just going to eyeball a quarter inch. It doesn't have to be perfect but right here you can see this is set to zero and I'm going to come down to about a quarter inch or 0.25. I'm going to come down from the bottom and I'm going to go up to 8.25 or approximately and then I'm going to do the same thing right here I'm going to go to 0 0.25 or pretty close to it if I'm within a few hundredths it is okay and again this is just a guide it does not have to be perfect but I find this to be helpful and making sure that I do not design and have my text go too close to the edge. So now I can go ahead and I can design um, my front and my back and you can see I've actually flip-flopped the names here which is just fine because really it's a two-sided document it doesn't matter which one is front which one is back we will print these on double-sided paper so it will be the same. There are some quirks inside of Photo P in relation to the ruler guides. I have designed these ruler guides on my back art panel. I now need to select on my front art panel and I need to create the ruler guides again. So I'm going to go back and put it in at about the same spots, 4.667, as close to it as I can get. And then I'm going to put it in each of the spots Right now I'm just eyeballing it just to kind of show you how you need to go. That way when you switch between the front layer and the back layer, you still have your guides. This guide I don't have correct, but at least this way you can see what you need to do for the front and for the back layer. You want to make sure that you have the guides the same on both layers. As you can see here, mine are not the same, so I want to make sure that I have them the same, otherwise it will not, it'll It'll get more distracting and so you want to make sure that these are the same and you can go back to the calculator to see what your exact values are and then you add in your guides on both of your artboards. Once you have your ruler guide set up inside of PhotoP, you can begin designing. Now there are some quirks in PhotoP in relation to the ruler guides and the different artboards. So if something doesn't work right, try it again. You can always undo, command Z, or you can go up to edit and then you can do undo or step backward. That way you can see what the mistakes are. As you see, I just clicked here and all, everything just turned off. If I click on the back layer, my guides show up again. To insert images, you can go up to file, open and place. 
I have a document saved on my desktop. I'm going to choose that. Let me go back to full screen window. With my document in here, or with my photo in here, I can drag it where I want it to be. I can even have this go across multiple panels of my brochure, or I could have it fit inside one portion of my brochure. It's all in how you design what your brochure to look like. One thing I do want to point out though is if you click on the front, you can lock the position by clicking on this icon here that will lock uh, so you don't have, excuse me, so you don't accidentally move the document. I can click on the back as well and I can lock it. You can also add some text in. And so I can, when you add text, I recommend you click and you drag a box because that will constrain the text to fit inside that box. So as you can see here, I can type across multiple uh, panels in my brochure. And because I drew a text box, it will automatically go to the next line. I can also resize this to fit within one of the panels. If instead of clicking and dragging a box, I simply click, this will keep typing. So as you see here, if I just click, it'll just keep typing in a straight line and I would have to manually go through and fix it. So again, I recommend that when you create your text boxes, you click on the type tool and you click and you drag a box for where you want the text to be. That will constrain the text into that box. I look forward to seeing what your designs and what your brochures are. Go ahead and follow the directions posted to Google Classroom and upload your finished brochure as a PDF.